Hello there. Welcome back to Jubes & Co. with me, Michelle Jubry. A brief reminder as uh, to who my panel are tonight. Peter Whittle, Director at the New Culture Forum. Lee Jones, Professor of Political Economy and International Relations. And Anthropologist Mary Ann O'Hotter. Now, I tell you, we just went to a break a moment ago. And if you missed it, we were just debating the Russian-Ukrainian uh, situation before the break. And I tell you, in the break, Mary Ann turned around to Professor Lee and said, shame on you for your uh, position on this. So I'm going to come back to the pair of you just for a couple <laughs> of minutes because I do want to talk about the cost of living as well. Why are you saying shame on Professor Lee for his opinion? Well, Professor Lee, I think it's not right to suggest that the seeds of this conflict are grounded in in the, the, the state of Ukraine and that there was this aspect of, of discontent and, and um, division within Ukraine. I think that's a very dangerous narrative that we start to tell, that basically it's Ukraine's fault and this was always going to happen. Um, that isn't the case. Russia invaded. Russia has invaded. They invaded in 2008. They invaded in 2014. We sat back, let them do it. We didn't want to pick the fight with big old Russia. And look what we have created through our, through our absence of action. It's not, it's not appropriate to suggest that Ukraine brought this on themselves or that essentially there were the seeds of that discontent and the division. And this is just the inevitable consequence of it. That is not the case. Russia are the aggressors. So Russia didn't invade in 2008. They invaded Georgia in 2008. And they invaded Georgia in 2008 in order to prevent it joining NATO. So since 2008, the Russians have made very clear... But you're suggesting Sorry, that's legitimate. Yeah, yeah let, let him respond yeah. to okay. interrupt you. It's, it's not a question of whether it is legitimate for Russia to do what it does. Because legitimacy, one way or the other, does not prevent... President Putin doing what he's doing. He is a major military power and he has shown that he is capable and willing to use military force against neighbouring states to prevent them joining NATO. He's been very clear about this and Russian leaders since the 1990s have said they cannot tolerate the eastward expansion of NATO. They find it humiliating, they find it threatening and given that NATO often deploys forces beyond NATO in non-defensive um, deployments, it's understandable from that perspective. Now, Russia should not be invading other countries, but that is the geopolitical context. The context in Ukraine is that the, the society is, has become polarised between East and West. In the East, there are many Russian speakers, ethnic Russians, who feel much closer to Russia than they do to the West. Western elites since 2014 have pursued a policy of integration with Russia's enemies and a hyper-Ukrainian nationalism which attempts to reforge Ukrainian nationalism around a Ukrainian identity which excludes Russian speakers, which excludes uh, Russian identity. And that has only compounded divisions. The only, way, the only way you can reunite the Ukrainian nation is to, have, is to pursue a neutral foreign policy. That's the basis on which the Russians will get out of eastern Ukraine. And that's what's needed to reunite the country. OK, so uh, three how, things. Uh, sorry, I have to come in. Just, just, yeah. You say uh, that's the only basis on which the Russians will get out of the Ukraine. That's a massive leap of faith bordering on naivety, isn't it? You think that that is the way they're going to get out of Ukraine? Well, Russia has made its demands very clear. It's no, no, they haven't. That's what they say their demands are. Their demands are to... Putin is frustrated that the Soviet Union fell apart. So the, the, the kind of the argument that he's trying to denazify Ukraine or that it was actually because NATO were threatening him on his, on his Western borders. It is nonsense. Putin is pursuing an imperialist strategy to bring back great mother Russia. And he won't be satisfied with the Donbass region. He won't be satisfied with just Crimea. He wants all of Ukraine. He wants to see a great nation once more. And so the fact that he feels bruised is nothing to do with what we do or don't do. It's nothing to do. Um, you talk about, you know, the way to establish a Ukrainian sovereignty is what we do. It's not really about us. Let's not put us at the centre of this. Mm. It's about Ukraine. It's about the Ukrainian people. And you can certainly have a very effective and thriving nation state that recognises and respects ethnic differences within a community. People can hold more than one identity at once. You can be British and British Asian. You can be... English and British. You can be English and European. With smart creatures, you know that, Lee. You're never just one thing. We are a multiplicity of identities. And the Ukrainians are as capable of living that reality as we are. 
you want to come back? Well, I'm afraid the record of the last several years is that is against what you're saying. What do you Ukraine mean? Ukraine is a fractured society. The only way to reunite Ukraine as a nation is to pursue a policy that is capable of uniting a population that has become deeply divided. And that means a policy of neutrality. That's what, the only way to satisfy Russian security concerns is to, is to declare that Ukraine will pursue a policy of foreign policy neutrality. Then any concerns about um, Russian imperialism will be put to the test. But the, the, they the, were put to the, the test. They were put to the test in 2008 when, uh, when, when Russia invaded Ukraine, uh, invaded Georgia in 2008. They did not occupy the country and, and, and in, integrate it into the Russian Federation. So this idea that they're on this, uh, this quest to sort of re-establish the Soviet Union... It just doesn't fit into reality. It really does in Ukraine because they withdrew the and Donbass. Allowed democracy to be ah, yes, yes. But look at the Donbass. You know, they've they've acknowledged, they've recognised these as as independent um, uh, sovereign territories, which they are not under international law. Yes. Those are pro separatist, pro Russian, bankrolled by Russia um, regions, which have seen an ethnic cleansing of the people in those communities who don't identify as Russian. They, people, those people have fled for their lives. What I would ask that you, is not ask acknowledging a reality in Ukraine. That's creating a falsehood that backs Final Russia's point. story. All I would ask you to consider, Marianne, is why those regions became separatist regions after 2014. It is intimately connected to the overthrow of a democratically elected government which had strong support in the East, which deprived the Ukrainian state of its authority in the East and allowed local mayors to pursue a separatist policy. So we have to understand why those regions became separatist in the first place and turned to Russia for assistance. It is intimately connected to a domestic political crisis in Ukraine. The situation there is incredibly complex. I don't expect everybody to know all the history inside out. But can we please look at the history carefully before and not resort to sort of um, cliches about Putin being a, a madman or an imperialist trying to recreate the Soviet Union or being like Hitler. The situation is complex and requires a sophisticated analysis and solution. Well, I've got Anything to say... That saps morale in a very bad way, actually. If you just sort of say people are resorting to clichés, I don't think there's anything clichéd about our discussion tonight I, at all. And I think that actually, you know, this is a man who's got a big painting of Peter the Great in his study. Um, I think, you know, he absolutely sees his his own destiny linked with that of Russia's. It's, it's not, the argument is not about how to unite Ukraine. I mean, you know, that is an argument, that is a discussion, but the whole point of this has been total aggression by Russia against Ukraine. It's as simple as that. You know, there's no point, there's no need to overthink this. In some if, if world politics was so simple, then I would be out of a job. 